Uh, hello, uh, I'm Christopher Keating, uh, fitness coordinator uh, as well as a uh, rock instructor here um, for San Juan College and I'm going to be introducing the 5 to 1 pulley system today for adaptive climbing and the adaptive chair. First thing that we want to have is the tandem pulley systems. What we have is uh, the camp uh, dryad pulley systems and they are tandem side-by-side -side pulley systems. To set this up, I'm going to set one um, standing on its side. I'm going to set the other one up with the locking carabiner attached to the lower um, attachment. And this one is going to be face up with the pulleys facing side by side. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, preferably a static rope. Um, we're going to take a static rope and going from the left side on the lower pulley to the right side, coming out the right side of this pulley. We're going to want to take a decent amount of rope. Uh, for this purpose, I actually took five body lengths in order to connect the entire pulley system um, together. So once again, from the left, I'm going to go on the lower side to the right, and I'm going to take a decent amount of line out this end. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lower end and I'm going to go from the left bottom to top. So on the top side here I'm going to go from the left from the bottom side of the pulley to the top side of the pulley. Once I have that, then I'm going to go through the top pulley on the top side with the locking carabiner from the right side to the left side. And then on the finishing side here, I'm going to go once again from my, whoop, sorry, it's the other way. <laughs> I'm gonna go from the right side and I'm gonna go from the bottom to the top, okay? Standing in the up position here, I'm gonna go from the bottom to the top with this. Now I have the pulley system threaded on either side. So I have it on the top side here with the locking carabiner through the bottom and the top. And over here I have it on the right and the left. The only thing I have to do now is tie a figure eight on a bite at the end and attach it to my locking carabiner. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit of, of rope to work with and I'm gonna tie a figure eight on a bite. Figure eight on a bite, correct. And I'm gonna attach it to the locking carabiner and screw it down. Now that we have the pulley system elongated, Scott, if I can get your help real quick, can you grab that end? Now that we have it all connected, we can pull and straighten it out and see that it's all connected properly and see that we have the preferably static line that's going back down towards our belayer. Okay. Awesome. Now we have the capability of attaching this to a top rope system 
um, in order to belay with the adaptive climbing chair that we have. Now that we have the pulley system put in place, we're going to attach the pulley system to the top rope system. So what I've done here is I've put a figure eight on a bite to the top rope system with the section of the rope that faces outward, not the section of the rope that faces the wall. So with the figure eight on a bite with a locking carabiner, I'm going to attach it to the top pulley of the five to one pulley system. We're going to raise the pulley system to the top. Go ahead and hold that right there. Give it a pull. Perfect. Just like that. And we're going to start getting line into the system by pulling this down and lifting upward. Go ahead and give me some slack now. That way I can pull up. Hold on. Let go. There we go. Pull. Just like that. One more time. Pull. Great. Let me pull up. A little bit more. Perfect. Now that we're at the top, I'm going to attach the rope that's closest to the wall to my permanent draws or my quick draws that are attached to the wall. To attach the top rope system that I've attached the uh, pulley system to, I'm going to attach that to the wall with the permanent quick draws that I have on here. So to attach it to the wall, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the permanent quick draw that's up here and I'm going to face that upwards. That's where I'm going to want my attachment point to be, somewhere in that area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a figure eight on a bite for the first one. So for the highest quick draw, I'm going to take a figure eight on a bite. And I want the end of the bite to be somewhere around the top of this carabiner that's attached to the quick draw. All right, want to go ahead and lower me? Go ahead and stop right there. So now that I've, atta I've attached the top quick draw, notice that I have a figure eight on a bite and the top knot that's attached to the top rope system is towards the very top of the permanent anchor we have up there the barrel roll. On the lower quick draw or the lower carabiner that's attached to the wall, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a clove hitch to back up my higher quick draw on the wall. The reason why I use two quick draws is for backup purposes. If one is to fail, the other one is in, in, in order to back it up. The reason why I use a clove hitch as the second backup is because I can adjust it accordingly. If there's too much slack in the line, I can take slack out, or if it's too tense, I can put more slack in the system. Now that we have the five to one pulley system set up on the top rope system, we're going to attach the chair to the lower pulley of the five to one system. I'm 
Make sure that we lock all of our locking carabiners. That way they're nice and tight. So now that we have the pulley system set up, we're gonna demonstrate how to get set up in the actual chair. So notice that the chair has a couple of different straps that we can adjust. We have the shoulder straps that can be adjusted by the quick buckles that are on the back. And all we do is just slide upward or downward to adjust that quick buckle. You can do both. Uh, you can do one on either side. If we have problems with one side versus the other being higher, we can adjust the shoulder strap um, accordingly. So we're gonna have Evie step in or sit into the chair. And we're gonna adjust the shoulder straps. That way we can put the chest strap over the top of her head. Good, just like that. For some individuals, we may have to lift and put them in the chair and do some type of, of chair lift or chair lift transfer. Um, for our chest strap, we would really like it if our chest strap goes just around sternum height um, below nipple line. Notice that we have multiple straps on the back. The top strap is for the chest strap. The middle strap is for the waist strap and the lower strap is for our leg loops. So with the chest strap, we're gonna go through underneath the armpits, through the quick buckle, making sure that we go through both buckles and double backing on the first buckle that we went through. You're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. And we can adjust tightness and center after we have both of them strapped. With our chest strap, we don't want our chest strap to be too tight nor too loose. If it starts to impede on the individual, we probably have it too tight. Um, if it is moving, uh, you can move it from side to side and up and down, it's probably too loose. This is our waist buckle and our waist buckle goes from white right to left and it's permanently attached to the seat that way. Notice that the lower two buckles are speed buckles. That means that I can go through one, which is the lower side, and over the top, and it's gonna attach quickly. It is a speed buckle or a single pass buckle. I can tighten it, and at that point it tightens down on itself. It is a quick buckle or a single pass buckle. For the leg loops, we have a loop for both right and left legs, and they both have a single pass or a quick buckle attachment on the back side of the chair. I'm gonna go right to right, left to left. With our leg loops and with our waist loop, very similar to our chest strap, we don't want them to be neither too tight or too loose. With our leg loops, if we have um, a lot of extra strap here, we probably need to tighten them down. However, we don't want them so tight that we see a line starting to create in their legs um, or their pants. At that point, we might be cutting off some circulation. Also notice that we have what we consider an auxiliary belay or an extra belay, a backup belay. And there are two red straps on the either side of the chair and one chest strap. And what we can do there is we can go with a locking carabiner through the chest strap and through both auxiliary leg loops 
And at this point, we could attach this to another top rope system that gives us a backup belay. Go ahead. So at this point, we can notice how easy it is for Randy with the five to one system to pull EB up the wall without any other assistance besides his Grigory and his own strength. So a couple different add-ons that we can add to this is we can add an extra rope as a directional pulley. So for instance, if I wanted EB to face the rock um, and kind of feel the holds, um, I could use the end of the top rope system that I've used and just tie a figure eight on a bite once again, attach it to my auxiliary locking carabiner that's attached to my auxiliary leg loops or my backup. Um, system as well as the chest strap and as Randy pulls her upward go ahead and take up I can now direct EB in a direction or a a way that I would like her to face as she gets higher I can pull her closer to the wall Or I can turn her side to side for a nice photo op or back to the wall to see all the climbing holds that she has in front of her. To set up our backup belay, all we're going to do is we're going to take the, uh, the, the next or the closest um, top rope system and we're just going to tie a figure eight on a bite in the rope that's closest to the wall. With that figure eight and that rope, we're gonna go through the top triangle or the top rectangle. And we're gonna attach it to that auxiliary carabiner that's attached to the chest strap, as well as the two leg straps. We're gonna lock that down. And as Randy takes up, Scott can be the backup belay behind him if anything were to fail. The complaint that we would get most often with this setup is that we have the backup rope in the, uh, in the person, in the, in the client's face. Um, and if Scott starts taking very hard on this, typically we'll have some type of snap of the rope, something we don't wanna see from our backup belayer. Remember that our backup belayer is just there in case something does fail in the system and he shouldn't be tense uh, as a backup belayer, there should be some slack in the line. We'll see them rise at the same time here. Randy first with Scott behind him. Notice as Randy takes up on the five to one system, Scott still has a little bit of slack in the line, not taking too hard to where it slaps EB in the face. As we lower, with this backup system, Randy lowers first, but we have to make sure that there's enough slack in the line on Scott's side or the backup side in order for that rope not to become tense and for her to pull towards that side. Notice that Scott has a lot of rope in the system and Randy can go ahead and lower. <laughs> 